See, I move her a tiny bit, like this. And then I take a picture with this camera here. Click. I move her again. Click. And again. Click. And when you play it all back, it looks like she's moving. This is Scotty and Andrew, and you're listening to Fun With Horror. Hi, I'm Scotty, and I legitimately love Howard the Duck. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew, and I legitimately love Laura Kinney, a.k.a. X-23. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and welcome to episode number 119 of Fun with Horror, your movie review podcast in which two long distance best friends keep in touch by giving each other horror movies to watch and discuss. I was fortunate enough to pick the last movie, which was a very new movie called Stop Motion. Uh, but we'll get into that later. Remember, though, stick around to the end of the episode because we are going to hear what Scotty picks for our next movie, which is always my favorite part of the podcast. But uh, until then, hey, man, how are you? Wait, I might have asked you this before, but does that mean that when you pick the movie, you don't have a favorite part of the podcast? That's right. Yeah, those are my I, my least favorite episodes. In fact, I, <laughs> I tell people not to listen. Every other episode you hate? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hate it. Hate it. I've been wondering why we have a pitfall every other episode. Yep, that's exactly why. Yeah, our numbers go up on when we find out what you pick. They go <laughs> down with my pick. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, you know. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm getting over a cold, so I might sound a little nasally. I'm getting over waking up in the morning, so I might sound a little <laughs> nasally. For everyone listening, it's four in the afternoon. No, I'm kidding. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, what a day. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> yeah, what well what's going on? Let's see. What's going on? Hey, I know what's going on. <laughs> what what's going on? Well, first of all, life is life is going well. Good. Everything Good. that I've talked about in previous episodes, things are turning up. Life is Yay. getting better. I have a job. Yay! Congratulations, buddy. Yeah. That's awesome. I knew that was coming. Me too. I mean, scrubbing bathrooms isn't glamorous, but it's work. And I told you, I've been trying to like keep my bathroom relatively clean for you, but you know, I miss. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, do miss. you miss a lot. <laughs> I do. You're. I actually do not aim. <laughs> I Please, when you get up to pee at three thirty in the morning, turn on the lights. You know, the gamble's more fun. You know, am I get what? <laughs> where am I getting wet tonight? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, Speaking yeah. of getting wet, I was also on Chuddle the Pod. Yes, I, I still haven't listened, man. I'm so sorry. I promise I'm listening soon. You shouldn't say that out loud. That's you true. should say, great episode. <laughs> oh, great episode. It was awesome. <laughs> no, we're transparent on this podcast. Gosh darn it. Uh, but yeah, so their recent episode in which they talk about Return of the Living Dead, I guest hosted on it. You can go to Chuddle the Pod and find that episode and listen to it, please. And listen to all their other episodes because they're great. Awesome, dude. I love their cover art, too. I think that I don't know who did it, but it's pretty awesome. I forgot to ask them. Yeah, it's great. It's really cool. Yeah. And now that I know them, I know yeah, right? which, which character on their cover art is which. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Also, real quick, I want to give a shout out to a couple of other horror movie podcasts. Please. One that's been around for a little bit, but it's really good. It's called The Night Club. Nice. So go listen to that. And then one that just started, and it's co-hosted by a guy named Colby, who reached out to me recently because he's a he's a fan of fun with horror. Nice. And he actually gave us a shout out on one of their recent episodes. So uh, his podcast is called The Horror House. Nice. Thank you, Colby. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So go listen to those. 
And also, I've I've watched a few movies. Oh, have you watched? And now I can't remember what they were. I'm sorry. It's okay, but oh, wait, no, good. I just remembered. I remembered because it's been interesting. Because along with the movie that we're going to talk about today, right? The horror movies I've been watching are very cerebral, mm. <laughs> like WTF horror movies. One was The Outwaters, which I came mean, out. Yeah. It came out around the same time as your favorite movie of 2023, Skinnamarink. Oh my gosh. And it kind of got somewhat of the same reception because mm-hmm. even though Skinnamarink is not a found footage movie, it's got that mm-hmm. kind of a feel to it. Outwaters is found footage. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, let me tell you, buddy. Half that movie is pretty darn straightforward. And the second half is like, what happened? The ending is crazy. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Oh, man. Then I watched another movie that we might cover on this podcast, but we might not. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I watched Bo is Afraid. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh, boy. I'm going to tell you right now. Please, yeah, let me hear. Normally, we don't tell each other what we think of movies, but I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that movie was really about. Oh, Lord. Okay. But but I loved it. Okay. (laughs) So, yeah. It's it's not anything like Midsummer or Hereditary. Okay. But it is a movie. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you you picked some interesting ones then, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been honestly, I watched Bo is Afraid because I was actually wondering thinking that we're probably going to get to it. Right. But then the whole question is is it right for this podcast? Mm-hmm. Well, but I think it would be fun to talk about. It's okay. it's got some horrific aspects to it, but it is like a weird horror comedy WTF movie. Okay. okay. It's, it's almost more WTF than any movie I've seen recently. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. There are definitely things I would love to discuss with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. Oh my gosh. But first, I was I was actually thinking of our movie today. Yeah. <laughs> if you could do a stop motion podcast, what would it sound like? No, go for it. Oh, I thought you were being funny. Because stop. I don't know. It's visual. So. No, I just love your improv and your impression. So I want you to tell me how, what would it sound like. What would a stop motion podcast sound like? Um, that, I can't hear anything. <laughs> you can't hear that. No, do it into the microphone. <laughs> just making noises. Like I couldn't hear anything. I just. It that? looks like you're like mouth air kissing the microphone. Never mind. Oh. Let's just get to the damn movie. <laughs> what should we call this guy? Ashes to ashes. The Ashman. The man no one wants to meet. Stop Motion is a 2023 surreal horror movie, isn't it? 2024, my friend. It didn't come out till March this year. Don't go by IMDb's stupid date. 2024. (laughs) They're like, oh, the movie was filmed in 2019 so and it but it wasn't released till 2024 it's a 2019 movie stupid IMDb, IMDb. IMDb. you know what we're gonna I, I am them... I am dumb B <laughs> please if you don't email them this episode with that as the subject title <laughs> we're quitting the podcast we're done start over my friend all right <laughs> Stop Motion is a 2024 surreal <laughs> horror movie <laughs> this summer. All right. It is uh, directed by Robert Morgan, who also wrote it with Robin King. And it stars Ashlyn Franchosi, Tom York, Kaylin Springall, and uh, Therica Wilson-Reed. Hoping I'm saying everyone's names right. I think yeah, that was beautiful, you. man. Thanks, man. Everybody out there, though, as always... Here we go. We're about to spoil the movie Stop Motion. Mm -hmm. We're not going to spoil Stop Motion as a genre. We're (laughs) just going to spoil the movie 
stop motion. So if you haven't seen stop motion, this is your warning. You can stop listening now and come back to it later, or you can keep listening. That's your choice because we believe in giving you guys the choice. It's true. That's so, true. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but my friend, here we go. Oh boy. Here comes the three minute recap and we don't know who's going to do it. We we're going to, we're going to roll the die, but we're going to do it a bit different. I'm just going to keep hitting roll on the virtual die here. And when Andrew tells me to stop, I'm going to stop it. If it's odd, Andrew's doing it. If it's even, I'm doing it. Okay, oh, here boy. I go. I'm rolling it. I'm rolling it. Here we go. Rolling it. Tell me when to stop. I'm rolling it. I'm rolling now, it. stop. <gasps> two. Number yeah! two. I'm doing it again. Yes, dude. Wow. <laughs> Good luck with this one. Piece of cake. Yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. So you do have you have three minutes, and of course, if you don't get it done within three minutes, I'm not going to show it to you, but I did create my own little stop-motion characters. They have been coming to life, believe it or not, and they will kill you if you go over three minutes. So just heads up. You'll get them in okay. the mail probably this week. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident, though. Okay, good. So they'll just stay in your house and kill you instead. So well, here we go. All right. <laughs> I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of heat time. All right. So stop motion is about a girl, a woman, a girl, a, a young adult named Ella. And she does stop motion films with her mother, who is evidently a legend in the stop motion genre. But her mother has arthritic hands and her daughter is helping her. They are consumed with finishing her mother's final movie. Ella also has a boyfriend named Tom who is very supportive of her. And Tom has a sister named Polly. Well, Ella's mother near the beginning of the movie gets a stroke, has to go to the hospital, but she wants Ella to finish the movie. What ends up happening though, is Ella takes this movie that she's doing about a cyclops who has an existential thing where it sees its own death. She takes it to this, vacant apartment in this building that is being emptied of people she pretty quickly meets this little girl who is kind of annoying but the little girl keeps coming up to the apartment and telling her that the cyclops story cyclops movie is boring and that she should make it about this girl in the woods who is being stalked by an unseen presence so ella in a fugue state which she doesn't even remember destroys the cyclops movie and starts making this movie about this little girl and it's a really creepy looking little girl made of this weird wax stuff and the movie starts to go from there the little girl keeps appearing and telling her that the next or the next step of the movie so the first night the ash man who is now the villain of this little stop motion thing knocks at the door then the little girl is like this isn't working the ash man needs to be made of a dead thing and she tries to get ella to create the ash man out of dead fox meat there's a dead fox in the woods because i think this is in england where there's plenty of foxes so then ella goes to a party she seemingly does acid and has an epiphany that maybe she should listen to this little girl. Little girl is suddenly at this party too, which is crazy, but not too crazy because it's in the same building that Ella lives in and has this stop motion thing. So she actually goes to get the fox. She makes the ash man out of the fox. The next step of this movie, the little girl says that the ash man on night two touches the girl. At this point, Ella's like, I don't want to go further with this movie, but then she ends up going further with it. The Ash Man touches her in this weird stop motion thing. At this point, you realize that this thing is consuming Ella's life. It's becoming her life. She's seeing and hearing the Ash Man stalking her in real life. So we fast forward. Her mom eventually dies. Ella goes to the hospital. Her boyfriend's there, and he's like, we have to stop this movie. Uh, I'm going to help you take it down tomorrow morning. But guess what? After her mom dies, I think, because it seems like that's what happens, Ella goes back to her apartment by herself, and she starts to – well, the little girl is there, 
by this time, we've realized that this little girl is not real. It's a sub psyche inside Ella's own head and that Ella is imagining this little girl. The little girl, though, this other part of Ella's mind is telling her that they need to go further, that the fox meat is rotting, that they need something more bleedy. So we have this amazing scene where Ella starts to cut into her own leg to take her own meat to make the stop motion dolls or puppets out of her own meat. But then her boyfriend, Tom, and his sister, Polly, show up. They start to take Ella out of the apartment. Ella kicks Polly in the face, knocks Tom down the stairs, then jumps on top of Polly and uses a tripod to stab Polly through the neck, killing her. Then she goes down to get Tom. Tom is still alive, but bleeding profusely from the head. Ella closes his mouth and nose and suffocates him. Takes both Polly and Tom upstairs, and guess what? Now she's got real human meat to make her new puppets from. She makes new puppets or builds on the puppets. They're pretty big now. Yeah. But suddenly she's she's filming these two new puppets with the little girl, her psyche, and the puppet, the Ash Man, starts to turn towards Ella and starts to follow her. Ella goes into this cabinet where the ash man comes into the cabinet. Then there's this whole thing where now Ella's in the woods and Ella goes into this red house, which is the same red house that's part of the movie. And now Ella's inside the movie, the little girls inside the house. They're watching this laptop. They're watching the movie and Ella is watching her own death in the movie. And then Ella gets in this like, trunk with this gold lining and the trunk closes the little girl says i like it and that's the end of the movie dude perfect that was just under three minutes <laughs> and I, I forgot to tell you i actually pretended to take lsd and thought i made those dolls but i didn't so there okay. weren't even any dolls so <laughs> we're both okay <laughs> that was your first lsd trip wasn't it, it yeah yeah okay, for sure cool. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't actually take it though. I just it turns out I got some stuff I need to work oh. on. <laughs> that's uh, that's <laughs> just like the movie. Oh, weird. <laughs> Andrew, you really picked this though. movie. I did. I did pick this you, movie. You picked this movie. You were very excited about it because you are a huge fan of stop motion movies. It turns out I love stop motion movies. I think they're beautiful. I didn't know how much you love them until our last episode. I I love them. I would marry them, but I'm already married, so I can't. Well, you know, polygamy is in. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you can marry Cindy and stop motion movies at the same time. I'll have that conversa conversation with Cindy later. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend. Yeah, buddy. What did you think of this movie? So this is a very, it's a, this is a, it's a surreal movie, man. And it was funny when you're talking about the other movie or just a little bit ago, you said kind of like it's pretty straightforward and then kind of the next half isn't. And I feel like this kind of had some of that vibe where it's like, hey, it's pretty we, we have a story going and then it kind of gets a little weird and wild and crazy. I wasn't sure how I felt about this movie afterward, <laughs> but after it sat with me for a little bit, I liked it. I did like this movie, man. It's a trip, but I I yeah, I liked it. Did it have enough stop motion in it? Because obviously this movie is not fully stop motion. Right. Right. It's a movie about somebody making a stop motion movie. So only parts of it are in stop motion. Right. And I think it did. I think for what they were doing, yeah, it was perfect. There was a perfect amount for this movie. And I love those moments, but we will we'll discuss that in a bit. That's good because I was worried about it. I was when I started to watch the movie, I was like, Andrew's gonna love this part because it's stop motion. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure how he's going to feel about the entire movie, but I had a feeling you would like it. Yeah, I did. And that that was one thing. I knew it was half or not even half, but I knew part of it was stop motion. Part of it was, you know, live action from kind of what I saw in the trailer. So, yeah, I knew kind of what to expect in that way, but <laughs> not movie, -wise, not story wise. But what did you think, man? I'm I'm, I'm very curious about you with this. Well, one. as as we both know, mm -hmm. I don't watch trailers. Right. So I had no idea what this movie was about. <laughs> uh, I liked the movie. I finished the movie and walked around thinking I liked it a lot. Okay, It's something that's been done. 
Uh, it's basically a movie about somebody who lets their work consume them so much that they become part of their work and their work becomes part of them. Right. Right. We've seen this before. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I don't know which episode number it is, but I don't know if you felt the same, but I even made a note that this movie reminded me a lot of censor. Oh man. Yeah. Wow. I did not put those two together, but you're absolutely right. And it was to the point that even huh. the look of the movie reminded me of Censor. Yeah. So I went to look to see if the director or somebody was the same, and it wasn't. It's This is a director, a directorial debut by Robert Morgan. Wow. But it, it has the same look and everything. That's the same totally feel. True. Yeah. Wow. I did not put that together, dude, but you are absolutely right. Yeah. Huh. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> no, for sure I do. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I now I'm thinking. I'm kind of going through, going like, "Wow, that's yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's yeah. wild, man." Huh. Yeah, but huh. yeah, all in all, I liked it. When I watched it a second time, I enjoyed it again. It was interesting to look at things. Some things were a little weird, like some things I don't really get. Okay, even in the context of a surreal type movie like this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's some. I'm just like, okay, are you just doing this to be weird? Right, right. And unlike other movies, this movie hasn't been out super long, so there's not a lot of analysis online. I look too. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of reviews of this movie. Right. Yep. So I'm just taking the movie at face value that it is about a movie that blurs the lines of reality and the movie that she's making mm -hmm. because it's consuming her. See, and I, I take it like that, but I, because I was like, okay, there's got to be some like hidden or some other meaning to this movie. So I, I did the same, you know, I kind of looked it up to see what people were thinking. And like you, I, I really could not find anything. Yeah. And I have my own idea or ideas of what it was. <laughs> so we'll, we'll discuss, but I'm like, I, I might be way off, but. Well, let's just get into that. Let me just start the blue egg. The movie opens with this blue glistening egg type thing just floating. Mm -hmm. And that egg comes back later when the Ash Man feeds it to her. And then we see that vision of the egg again, but this time part of it bursts and little bloody little bloody pus comes out of it or something. Mm -hmm. And then we see the egg at the end again. Right. Having I just wanted to recognize that yeah. as the thing that I was like, what the hell is this? Right. Now tell me your ideas. So my, and I'm, maybe, I'm, I should probably just say trigger warning, because I honestly thought that this may have been a movie, or she may have been sexually abused at a young age, and that was kind of the Ash Man, because we see she creates this movie about this little girl who this man is following her. Then, night two, the man touches her, and when she, when he does that in real life, he puts that egg in her which could represent i know i know that was kind of my thought it's really dark but i was like i don't know and then it made me think because right away i knew the little girl was not real i knew like immediately when she shows up i was like that's in her head i thought maybe that was the age it happened and that's almost her self at that age you know kind of coming back as like this trauma that's never been healed or I don't know what you want to call it, but that was kind of how I interpreted this. And sort of at the end with her dying, when she watches her death and again gets in that the box, whatever it's called, with like that gold lining, it was her kind of just finally escaping to something maybe more peaceful or better, like yeah. like this death, this happier death, whatever it may be. So. That's how I took it. I I might be way off, but man, I don't know. Just some of the things that happen, especially seeing this little girl afraid of this bigger man. I just went, oh, I'm getting a bad vibe with this. I mean, it's I interpretive. Kind of it. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense because when the Ash Man is like chasing her mm -hmm. during the second, the night he touches her. All right. She is trying to escape into that gold line box. Right. That safe place. Yep. And she doesn't make it. Yep. Okay. All right. Oh, man, that's that's disturbing as hell. 
Believe me, man. I know. <laughs> Sorry to put a downer on this, but that's my interpretation. Of well, it. that's our podcast. In a second, we'll <laughs> yeah. be we'll be back to pick our next movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow i'm sorry i am utterly depressed now i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i know Ugh. okay yeah that's 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 amazing sorry i just bumped my microphone but you're good buddy you're good so i guess that would mean her mom probably helped cover it up or her mom was too consumed with her work to notice the girl that's what i was thinking as well is just and even because, I mean, there is that strained relationship we see between the two of them. And, obvi- I yeah. mean, it, you could look at it like, oh, our mom's overworking her, overbearing or whatever. But, I don't know, the way the, the way the mom's, like, eating that meat, I was like, ah, maybe she's, like, I don't know. I just, I saw her almost, like, as a feral, like, wolf when she's doing it or something. Like, maybe she was part of it. Or, like you said, covering it up. Or, I don't know. And that was an interesting scene, too, because, you know, we have... We have her and her mom. Then Ella goes and stays or goes out with her boyfriend. She goes to have drinks with her boyfriend and his sister and friends and people. Mm-hmm. And then she's out all night at her boyfriend's place. And it seems like a pretty good relationship. Right. But then she gets up in the morning and gets back to her place. And the moment she gets goes to bed, <laughs> her mom wakes her up. Right. And we have a scene before that where... They're eating, and she cuts up her mom's meat. Mm -hmm. But then in this scene, she's just so tired and so fed up with it that she just lets her mom, like, with her arthritic hands, try and use this sharp knife, which made me really uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's interesting. Now, what do you think the whole theme of meat is? Because this movie has a big theme of meat. Oof. That's true. I I don't know. I actually did not not even... I don't I didn't think about it either until you just told me this whole theory that makes complete sense. Now I'm wondering what that has to do with meat because right. she cuts up her mom's meat, then when she cooks that fish in the pan, it just looks so disgusting. <laughs> I would love to know if Robert Morgan, the director and writer, and Robin uh-huh. King, I would love to know if they're vegans because they definitely made meat uh-huh. in this uh-huh. movie look disgusting and that's revolting. true yep and the movie yeah. had a big theme of me so i wonder maybe the whole movie is a metaphor for veganism hey man it might be <laughs> i might be i don't know <laughs> she doesn't want to use the meat right even of a dead thing but <laughs> and at the very end the meat tries to kill her right. <laughs> but she escapes into her safe vegan box <laughs> I love your interpretation, man. That's much better. Yeah, I'll go with that. That's a, yeah, a little lighter. We'll go with that. Yep. And instead of sexual abuse as a child, her mother just forced her to eat meat. They're yeah. much better. Much better. Yeah, we'll there go we with go. yours. That's a lot happier. Ah. Mm. I actually do have notes about the meat, too, even though you- I didn't even. Yeah, it's just. It is interesting, though, because every time we see that, even when Tom comes over Mm -hmm. and she's working on her thing and he has some raw meat to cook for dinner. But when he brings it over, like he dangles the meat in front of her and the meat just looks disgusting. It's true. You're right. They never make the meat look appetizing ever. No, no. I am very curious now if they're vegan. I'm really curious (laughs) because you're right. (laughs) It never looked good. Never. Wow. Huh. I think you cracked the code, my man. So here's the other thing I was wondering if the movie had anything to do with. But, again, your theory just makes complete sense. And not the vegan theory, the the sexual abuse theory. Because I'm going to say this. I'm not going to say anything about The Outwaters. But oh, okay. I watched The Outwaters either the same day that I watched this or the day before. Okay. And I watched both with my headphones on. Okay. Both movies are incredible experiences in sound design. Oh, okay. That's all cool. I'm going to say about The Outwaters. If anybody's seen The Outwaters and they've, especially with headphones on, they'll know what I'm talking about. But this movie as mm. well was very interesting sound design wise. Mm. I was wondering what the purpose of some of the stuff was. Like, even from the beginning, there's a lot of moments in this movie where 
we're basically experiencing this from Ella's point of view, mm -hmm. right? Right. And I just had this existential fear that uh, her name wasn't actually Ella in the movie and that I've been saying the wrong character name the entire podcast. <laughs> but I'm correct, so <laughs> never mind. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, we have a lot of moments where the sound is muffled around her. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Where yep. she's waking up out of a dreamlike state or something, and she's not really hearing everything around her until right. the sound comes into focus, if right. you will. Mm -hmm. That was interesting to me. And that starts off early in the movie. Yeah, right. Right at the beginning. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, like, oh, man, I like my whole thing was I was wondering if the movie was also about uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. I can see that because she obviously seems to become more schizophrenic as the movie goes on. She's got mm -hmm. this little girl who's another part of her psyche. Right. But now I don't think so. <laughs> I think you're right. I think honestly, I just think you're right on. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I just, you know, I think part of the muffled thing is that she just disassociates right. with the world around her. Yep. Man, yeah, I, I get that. I think, I think I need to go watch this movie again, along with all the Batman movies. Just kidding. That's a callback to our April Fool's episode. Because I, <laughs> I had to lighten it up somehow. Yeah, like, thank you. This, yeah. Uh, this yeah. podcast got dark. Yeah, it did. Dark Knight, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Let's talk about the acting. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, it was good. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <sighs> no, I I think everyone was great in this. I think I'm gonna <laughs> just Ashlyn. Don't. Ashlyn. Thank you. This is another one where I've never seen her before, or or, or if I have, it, I don't know. Did but, you ever see a movie called The Nightingale? I did not. And I know you haven't seen The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Oh, no. Is she in that? Evidently. Yeah. Oh, cool. From okay. what I read. But she was, when I looked up interviews with her, all I saw were interviews about The Nightingale, which is supposedly a very disturbing, brutal movie, but also very good okay. from what I've seen. But anyway, yeah, go on. But she's great. I mean, she was, yeah, after watching her, I was, I, this is again, one of those ones where I said, I really hope I see her again. I really hope that people watch this and hire her. <laughs> Because I yeah. want to see her and more and more, please. Absolutely. Yeah. And she plays, I mean, she played that part so well of that. Which side is she on today? You know, kind of a, a person. So loved it. But on a, like I said, everyone in this I felt was was great. I don't. Well, think also, was... like you, you talk about her being a different person at different times. I don't think she played it that way, which is really good. Mm hmm. She right, was, she right, did right, have right. different personalities, but she still always seemed like the same person. Exactly. Yes. Just yes. going through a thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now, on the other hand, mm -hmm. we have Kaylin, Kaylin right. Springall, who played the little girl. Mm -hmm. I thought she was incredible. Yeah, me too. And she right away, I mean, because like you said, she, she could be annoying, but it was the character. It wasn't her. And it was yeah. meant no, to no. be. You know what yeah, I mean? Like she was, was not annoying. Right. Not at all, but the, the character could get under your skin a little bit. But she played yeah. that part perfection to get under your skin. So I completely agree. I think she's fantastic. Now I want to go back to something you said earlier. Uh oh, okay. That you knew right away that she was not real. I know. Like the moment she appeared on the stairs and blocked her path? Pretty much. Yeah. I was like, I, my first thought was, I don't think this girl's real. <laughs> That's my first thought, dude. I don't know. I watched it last night for the second time to take some notes, mm -hmm. and I was trying to remember where I realized that she wasn't real. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I you're a smarter person than me, buddy, because I did not. I don't think I realized it until just before. I think, man, I'm just I'm just trying to think. I think it mm -hmm. might have been when she takes Ella into the woods. Oh, to see the yeah. fire. Even then, I wasn't really thinking that she was a part of Ella's psyche. Sure. Well, and I'm, I've told you this. I'm, I don't know why, but my brain just clicks random weird things in movies. I wish I was, I knew this kind of stuff in real life about whatever, but 
for some reason in movies, I just uh, it'll hit and I go, oh, I don't think she's real. You know, I tell people <laughs> that if they listen to Fun with Horror, all of our listeners are actually very lucky because <laughs> they are listening to probably the smartest guy in all of horror podcasts when they hear you. Oh, I thought you were talking about you because I was no, like, yeah, that's no, right. No. No, I'm stupid. I didn't realize it was her. What are you talking about? <laughs> stop, stop, stop. I thought it was a little girl that lived downstairs. <laughs> well, I think, you know what I think it was, to be honest, is she's in this building. And I know there are people there because I think we see a couple at one point, like walk out. Or I don't. Or do we? Or do we? That's true. Or do we? But I think just seeing it so empty and then this little girl just shows up. I don't know. It just clicked like, that's weird. Why would she? Oh. She's not real. <laughs> like, you know, it just just seemed out of place almost, I guess. I don't know. See, the people is what threw me off, though, because mm. the little girl blocks Ella's way up the stairs. Right. And then Ella goes into her apartment and she keeps hearing the little girl singing in the hallways. So she goes out to look and a couple people walk by the stairs and look up at her. And right. I'm like, oh, so there are other people in this place. It's mm -hmm. not. You know, people are moving out just like Tom said. Right, right. I Honestly, I don't think it hit me that the little girl was not real until the party when the little girl shows up yeah. wearing the fox yeah. makeup. I think that's the point where I was like, oh, she's not real. Right, right. But now I just feel dumb because you're so smart. Stop. No, knock it off. No. Smartest no. guy in podcasting. Oh, that's not true at all, friend. Not even close. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson has nothing on Andrew. Is that his name? Yeah, that's, yeah I think that's exactly right. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Andrew Nye, the science guy. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the hints. Like, if you haven't figured out that the little girl's not real, mm -hmm. I like the hints that they give you. Like, well, first of all, she shows up at this party. Oh, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But then when they go into the woods after the party, mm -hmm. I like how I think Ella is or no, the little girl is recording herself. Mm -hmm. Wait, hang on. Let me look this. What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, oh right. Uh... Yeah. So she's she's got a tape yep. recorder. Yes. And she's talking into it. But when she plays it back, mm -hmm. it's Ella's voice. Yeah. There's little hints like that. And of course, then right after that, if you haven't figured it out, Ella specifically says the first sign of going mad is talking to yourself. And right. if you haven't figured it out by then, friends, then <laughs> just then, just wait. Then you're you're <laughs> sub Scotty intelligence. <laughs> Knock that off. <laughs> Such a brat. <laughs> how about so back to the sound design, man? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. How about the heavy breathing? Yeah, that just starts to continue throughout the movie as she loses herself more and more. Again, it's sort of like to me the uh, like when you get instead of like an instrumental music, you get kind of those beats, those hums that make you just a little uncomfortable or something's a little off. Yeah, you know, it was kind of that to me of like Ugh, I don't like like this just doesn't feel good, which I think was probably the point. You're not supposed to feel great. Yeah, but. At least that's how I felt, you know, when, we, when you hear it, it's just like, ugh, ugh, I'm comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so then let's talk about the stop motion movies that they're making. Obviously, you love that stuff. I loved it. Yeah. I, th I loved the design of the little girl yes. in the stop motion movies. Like, how freaking creepy was that? Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. It was, yeah. Yeah. She looked great. I loved it. And I don't know if the microphone or Zoom or whatever will pick this up, but the little noises that the stop motion girl is making yes. in the movies, she's going like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. like little little grunts. They're just in a way, just even more disturbing. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's funny. I don't know why, but all of a sudden you just I just hit my mic. Um, you talking about the stop motion was like at the beginning. I didn't even think of this until just now. The foreshadow of her watching herself die and the Cyclops watching his future self die. Oh, my like, God. Just oh, my hit. God. I didn't think about it either. Just oh. did. I, when he said stop motion, I just thought of that part and went, oh, that's the end. And the Cyclops is a female, by the way. So that's even oh, right. more. Yes. 
Yes. On the nose. Oh my God. Wow. Wait, did I even write that down? You probably did. You're I just didn't. being humble. I'm no, I honestly I meant to write down. I was actually thinking of writing down what she said the Cyclops movie is about. Mm, mm-hmm. And I'm like, that probably means something. But then I didn't write it down. Like, I'm, <laughs> dude, why? <laughs> see, I'm thinking podcast. of like the foreshadowing of like, so after we see the blue egg floating mm-hmm. in the nether, right. we get the <laughs> we get the shots of, which was an interesting sequence. We get shots of Ella standing seemingly in a club with strobing lights on her. Yes. Yep. And the lights are different colors, and I'm thinking, oh, is this that illusion, this optical illusion that people do where with the lights coming at you from different angles, you look like a different person? Right. Yep. But I did notice that her mouth was open at times, and then it mm-hmm. would be closed, so it was not it was not just her standing there with these lights strobing on her. It right. was pretty much a stop-motion light show thing on Ella. That's cool. I didn't even think of you. Like as a, it as a you stop didn't, you motion, didn't but think that's of me. perfect. You didn't. I think didn't. Of me. No, uh, not you. No. <laughs> what was your name, Steve? No, Steve. Steve. What's your name? <laughs> Adam. Adam. <laughs> Welcome to Happy with Friends. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't write down what the Cyclops story was about, but man, you just you just hit the nail on the head. Oh, thanks, man. It's just because we were talking, though. I never would have thought of that until we, I don't know, us visiting. But once again, who thought of it first? I think you probably subconsciously thought of it. And then when you looked at me. The smartest guy in podcasting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have a real big ego after this episode. Good. (laughs) Good. It'll up your game. Oh, good. Has it been down? (laughs) Yeah. 119 episodes worth. (laughs) finally i'm making some good conversation (laughs) oh man um i like okay so looking back on this entire movie here's the other thing okay thinking of your very dark theory why do you think ella was so intent on impressing the little girl meaning herself Mm -hmm. that was one thing she was looking for the entire movie was the girl's approval because at the end finally the little girl turns to her and she says does she say i love it i think she's yeah she looks at ella as they watch the movie of ella dying and she says i love it and that at that point ella's comfortable getting into her safe box right so mr smarty pants oh god what's that about <laughs> oh man i don't know i guess thinking like you know whenever you hear people this i just might be wrong but like i've seen a lot of interviews where people will say you know what would you tell your 10 year old self and it's always like it will get better it will get better it will get better so it might be something like that like hey it will get better i'm trying to show you that it's better it will be what it needs to be or whatever you are firing on all <laughs> cylinders today pal you're amazing <laughs> that's that's awesome <laughs> wow dang that's, man. So, that's so true <laughs> Oh, man, it will get better after you kill your boyfriend and his sister and make a make a meat puppet of them. Oh, actually, those. Well, we'll we'll talk about those later. But so that's another thing with meat, by the way, at the very beginning when she's in Tom's apartment, I think, Uh and she imagines her mom laying on the carpet. And then suddenly she sees her mom is just like a human figure made of different slabs of meat. That's totally true. Veganism. You're, see, I think I think you <laughs> cracked the code, and I think I need to be oh, saying that you're the smartest man. We in have podcast. We have horror. to do. Bo is afraid now. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's some other things I liked. Yeah, please. I really liked when she's at the party and she goes into that weird ass room. Oh, yeah, dude. I love that ventriloquist dummy. Me too. Me too. It's so creepy and awesome. Like, on one side, I'm like, oh, they put this in the movie just to be obviously creepy. Right, right. But on the other half, I'm going, but I love it. Yes, I know. Actually, if you go on, I think it's either on IMDb or somewhere, like, if you see the trailer 
you know, where you can hit play on the trailer. Like that's the image that sh- shows up. And I'm like, Hey, that would get me to click on it. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. So yes. love it. I also like how as the stop motion movie becomes part of her life or more mm-hmm. of her life. I like how she starts molding different things like at the party. Mm-hmm. She seemingly goes into a room with Tom and they make love. And there's right. these different shots of her, her hands on his back, but she's like pressing into mm. his skin, not like in a bad way, but as if she's molding his flesh. Right. Exactly. Yep. And then she's sleeping in his bed the one night. Yeah. Or no, not the one night. There's just the moment where she's in the shower and she's yes. like washing her leg, which is interesting because it's the same part of her leg that gets the gash on it later. Mm-hmm. But she is pushing her fingers into her leg. And for a second, it's like the her leg becomes the shaping clay. Right. Yep. And then, so here's the weird part. This was the question I was wondering, because mm-hmm. she has the quote unquote dream when she's sleeping at Tom's place right. of the little girl doll, the little girl stop motion figure coming into the bedroom mm-hmm. and opening up the skin of her leg. Yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking that, oh, later on when she's in the hospital, they say that she's got a really bad cut in her leg. She mm-hmm. must have actually made the cut then. But I also don't think that can be true because she was in Tom's bed. He would have noticed blood in the bed. Right, right. And then they go to breakfast. Yeah, that's true. So I don't know. That that may have been kind of the intent, but at the same time, it was weird. So it is weird that the doll opens up a cut in her leg at the exact spot that she ends up having the cut in her leg when she goes to the hospital. Right. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, how Remind me, how did she get the cut? I'm totally blanking right now. We don't know. Okay, we don't know for sure. Okay. No, she had... Oh, uh, wow. Actually, let me see if I have it in my uh, notes here. So the Ash Man in her dream state thing feeds her the blue egg. Right. And there's that whole moment there. And I think she passes out or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she does. Wakes up in the hospital. I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to remember oh. the details. But then she's in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And. The nurse is just telling Tom that she's got a bad cut in her leg. That's it. That's right. You're right. We yep. don't ever see her get a cut in her leg, except for the doll opening up her leg. Hmm. I don't know. But anyway, back to like, oh, no, no, no. back to her, like making stop motion part of her life. I also right. thought it was very eerie when she's sitting in her mom's hospital room. Oh, yes. And she's making a stop, quote unquote, making a stop motion movie with her mom's hand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was cr- kind of brilliant, but super creepy. And like you said, eerie, just really yeah. like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually remembering things from the movie. But we also have Polly. Now, Polly is Tom's sister. Yeah, yeah. Polly yeah. actually kind of reminded me of and I I'm sorry, I can't remember the character's name, mm. but it's the character that Natasha Tosini played in Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Mm hmm. Holly reminded me of that character, the uh, hot tub girl character. Uh-huh. Right. Just the way she talks and everything. I don't know. But Ella trying to get away from the stop motion world goes, mm-hmm. I guess, to work with Tom's sister. Right. Thinking she's going to be doing stop motion and posing things. But then they just have her making a hundred little eyes. Right. This was also weird to me because we find out. When Ella walks into a room that they've basically stolen her idea and they're right. making their own commercial with the little girl in a woods thing. Right. Why would they even invite her to work there if they're stealing her ideas? You know, well, I know they keep point, asking yeah. if she wants to come in and talk to them. But at a certain point, you know, at the party, mm-hmm. Ella finally says to Polly, I would rather die than work in a place like that. Right. I don't. Yeah. And I guess Polly justifies it, quote unquote, by being like, no, it's just concept. Like we're just using your concept. It's like a concept art or whatever. Yeah. 
But still, no, I, I, I'm I, kind of with Elle on that one. If someone took my stuff and is using it, I'd be like, hey, come on. Yeah. You can't do that. So, I mean, I can't. Yeah, it is it's not copyrighted. Enough. It's not copyrighted. So Right. You're right. You're but right. it's still, it's ethically awful. Right. Exactly. And it's almost like a, it's almost like family, a sister-in-law, almost, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. But you know what? I, I think know. it, I think it deserves a tripod in the neck. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, <laughs> that lingered, man. That one hurt. That one yeah. hurt. I had to say, oh. like, the first time I was like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that on the recording, but you know, it was, <laughs> I was, I was aghast. <laughs> but the second time I was sitting there marveling and thinking, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a kill in a horror movie like this one. I've seen things through the neck, but I've never right. seen a tripod stand through the neck. Right. But it t- almost takes its time, like crushing. Like it, it oh, yeah. really, I mean, I sat there wincing because it just, it hurt. Like it just looked. Yeah so painful so props to them because that looked brutal brutal but not as brutal as ella cutting into her own leg undoing the stitches it's so slow they just don't spare the viewer at all no No. we're gonna show you her taking her stitches out and then slowly trying to open this cut on her leg to take her own leg meat muscle meat out of her leg that was so difficult to watch and yeah. i love that yeah no this is yeah oh, what's the called um there's a type of horror for it or a name for the horror i don't know i can't man. think of it it's not either torture, torture it's not torture or... porn because no she's... not that but it has the same remember, feel yeah. of torture porn right yeah like yeah, it's not it torture porn obviously but right 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 in torture porn you're watching awful things being done to the human body right so it's the yeah. same kind of like the same kind of stuff you see in Saw. Right. I guess body you know? horror. It's called body horror. Isn't that what it's called? Kinda, but not mm-hmm. really. Because okay. body horror is more like tumors and stuff. Oh, right. The body okay. misshapen, I think. You know, okay. that's how I see body horror. Maybe I'm wrong and people are out there going, You idiot. No, you're stop it. You're dumb. Both of you. I'm never listening to this podcast again. Well, we all know I'm not dumb. Rumor has it I'm one of the smartest podcasters out there, so no, the smartest podcaster. Not one of. Don't sell yourself short, pal. I'm going to listen to this episode every week, buddy. <laughs> when I need to pick me up. <laughs> Andrew, what kind, of, what kind of stuff do you listen to for self-help, for self-positivity? What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's right. Self-help. No, self, there's a word self-help. I'm looking for. There's a word I'm looking for. Like, the what do you listen to to... To pump yourself up. Oh, right. What is it? I'm thinking of a word. It's, I can't, it's not coming to me. This is what happens. Motivate? Self motivation. Self motivation. There you go. All right. What do you listen to when you listen to motivational podcasts? I listen to Fun with Horror, episode 119, Stop Motion, (laughs) the movie that is seemingly about sexual abuse. Ah, Maybe we'll (laughs) leave that last part off. Ugh. Yay, self motivation. Yeah. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, as we yeah. were saying, yeah. 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 I will say, okay, so going back to the sequence that starts with Ella cutting into her leg and ends with her killing Tom. Right. That was weird to me. Because oh, she knocks why. Tom down the stairs. Right. Tom's bleeding. Right. And then Ella uses her hands to, you know, I'm, now I'm not going to doubt somebody's strength here, mm-hmm. but people really have an aversion to being suffocated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've seen this. We've seen people, they start to thrash about. All Ella is doing is putting her one hand to close his nose and the other hand over his mouth. Mm-hmm. Do you really think he wouldn't have been able to like, stop her do you think he was like hurt so much like it would have been better if they had had him paralyzed like oh he broke his back going down the stairs right that would have been disturbing maybe with his head with head trauma it's always you never know i don't know i I didn't i guess i didn't really look at it like i wasn't too i was more just like yeah that's a that's also Uh, a really horrible death (laughs) it, it struck me at the right away because he's actually able to get his hands up and grab her hands and you'd really have to cut off the mouth 
breathing like perfectly to suffocate somebody like that. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I think I would have been able to do it. You want to well, try it? Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm, I'll am i fly over there right now. We'll do it. No, uh... but you got to send Cindy over. Have oh, yeah. her knock me down the stairs and then try and suffocate me. All right. Yeah. And we can kind of do like a, we'll we'll post it to our Fun With Horror uh, YouTube page. We can't post a video because that's a snuff film. Oh, but we can, we can just, you can post a play by play. Okay. As you're watching the video of me maybe I'll suffocating. I'll do a stop motion version of it. Brilliant. Thank you. Done oh, and done. Man. Done and done. <laughs> so going back to our movie, when they're out in the woods and the little girl is trying to get her to build the ash man with fox meat. Yeah. Yeah. Did the thought cross your mind at that point that this movie's going to accelerate into human meat? Yep. Yep. Exactly that moment. I was like, oh, it's gonna get worse on night three. <laughs> Yeah. Do we even know what night three is? Not we don't really. ever find out what night no. three is because maybe night three is like what you're saying with the bad theory. And night three is the bad night. Yeah. Yeah. The end or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Because what happens in this movie is, yeah, they build they build a bigger little girl stop motion girl and Ash Man out of supposedly the dead meat or the, right. the meat of Polly oh, and oh. Tom. And then the little girl and Ella are watching them come to life. And then the ash man walks towards Ella. Right. Right. And even the little girl is surprised. This is not supposed to happen. Right. Ella gets into this cabinet, this standing wardrobe type cabinet. The ash man gets inside. And then there's a sequence where the ash man is digging into Ella's face as if it's clay. Yes. Yeah. So her, her face becomes clay. She becomes the girl. Now, is she just becoming the stop motion girl? Is she becoming one with the stop motion girl at that point? Either that or it's the molestation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said trigger warning at the beginning of this. Damn. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to have the same theory. So I was like, I'll, I'm just throwing it out there. But yeah, then she's like, then she's, I guess as she's dying, she sees herself because she's obviously dying from blood loss and yeah, the struggle of killing her boyfriend and sister, mm -hmm. his sister. And that's what she's imagining as she's dying. She's imagining maybe she was making the movie of the Ash Man tearing into the face of the little girl, but then she disassociates from that even. And she becomes, she becomes a little girl and she's inside the house with the little girl Watching the movie, I think it was very poignant that when she's watching herself dying, the Ella that's dying is holding the stop motion trigger. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, what we talked about, she gets into the gold box of safety. Right. After the little girl says, I love it. Yeah. It's a wild movie, man. I'm going to say this too. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the themes of this movie. Okay. Is it me, or do retractable knives in movies bother you more than actual knives, like box like, cutters? Like scare me more, or just or make just you make squirm me... more? Like oh yeah, for sure. Oh for sure. Yeah. Like if somebody oh, sure. somebody picks up a butcher knife, I'm like yeah. But then if <laughs> yeah. somebody picks up a retractable box cutter knife, I'm mm -hmm. like oh no. That's weird. No, I'm totally with you, but why? I mean, either one's going to hurt real bad. Yeah, and the butcher knife is most likely going to kill you. But the, yeah. I think the retractable box cutter knife is just going to hurt like a mother. Yeah, that might be it. Because I and I feel like I've cut myself more, which is weird, but maybe more with like a box knife, just from cutting boxes than with, yeah. I don't use a butcher knife. I don't know. You know, maybe it's something... Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's a really good thought, though, or good point, huh? I mean, it's the thing with me with my fear of hypodermic needles. Like, mm -hmm. I have tattoos, and well, I've, had, yeah. I've had things pierced on my body. Right. My nipples. And yes. uh, hypodermic needles bother me more. That's interesting. That is yeah, interesting. It's very strange. Very strange. So box cutters are worse. I definitely want to hear from people out there. Yeah. Um, yes. If you've listened this far... Throughout this depressing episode. Oh, sorry. <laughs>
It's the fault of Andrew, the smartest guy in podcasting. Also the darkest. <laughs> I guess, man. Jeez. But seriously, let us know if box cutter knives in movies bother you more than actual butcher knives or mm -hmm. bigger knives that would do more damage. Yeah. There's an episode of a show called Box Cutter. You know the show. We can talk later so I don't spoil anything. But it's okay. one of the second the box cutter comes out, I was like... Mm -hmm. That's yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it because I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, we will. You, I, you know it though. Believe me, because <laughs> I think we watched it together. Interesting. I don't. You know, I've blocked out everything that we did together though. <laughs> so I'm having a hard time. <laughs> what do you think of the music? So I, I have this note. To me, it felt more like the like the sounds of yeah you know, to get you uncomfortable. So I didn't, I don't really have a note on the music. It felt more to me just like the uncomfortable sounds. Atmospheric music. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. At the same time, I liked this one a lot. Mm -hmm. There were no recognizable themes. Right. Uh, the score was done by Lola de la Mata. Okay. Who I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. I was very disappointed when I went to Apple Music slash spotify if you use that and there's no soundtrack available oh. i was i was sad because i wanted to listen to the disjointed <laughs> weird noises <laughs> that was the soundtrack right there i just did it that's exactly right i did enjoy it it wasn't memorable but i i actually i liked it because i like it had kind of an industrial feel to it or mm -hmm. what it was i don't know it was very disturbing and it was, it made, I mean, it did its job for me. I was uncomfortable. Um, but it, like you said, there's no recognizable themes. There wasn't anything where I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's the tubular bells of this movie, you know? Yeah, true. Very true. Yeah. Something I should have mentioned earlier that mm -hmm. I did not, I did not. <laughs> Robert Morgan, the director, mm -hmm. he I did see one article about him and it's interesting. He he said in the article, I've never thought that stop motion is a cutesy kid thing. I've always thought it was an uncanny, slightly occult process, building little puppets and then doing the strange ritual on them, which brings them to life. <laughs> so he, he never thought of stop motion, even the kids stop motion movies as right. cute. He, he always found it creepy, which I love. I kind of do, too. I mean, so many of the movies out there that are stop motion, I mean, they are, they're for everybody. Adults, kids, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But so many of them do kind of have a darker theme to them, which is kind of interesting after hearing him say that. I'm like, oh, that's, hmm. I kind of love it, though. I kind of love it. That said, I still need to see some of the Leica movies, like Kubo and the Six Strings. Me too. Or, I or... really want to see that one. This is completely off tangent but Good. i have tried to start that movie like multiple times i think i've started really? it at least two or three times and never finished it wow okay so there's a scotty fact for you <laughs> everyone on your bingo list if scotty mentions he's tried to watch kubo three times mark it <laughs> I don't know. three times you know what that means Three questions. Three questions. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. Andrew. Yes. Question number one. Uh-huh. What did you think was the best kill or death in stop motion? So because I had my theory, and we only really have like three deaths, I actually said Ella, but because it's her getting away from this trauma, at least in my book. So her getting into her safe space. I was like, I kind of, I, it's a weird way to do it. It's an interesting way to do it, but I kind of like how it was done. And so, I don't know. I, I guess just with my theory, I was like, I, I like that, that she got out of it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, that's fair. That's fair, buddy. I did not put Ella. I actually didn't even put her as one of the deaths in the movie. So, oh, right on. Good call. Thanks, man. I, thought that there were three deaths in the movie her mom tom oh, polly right. i put polly because i the, especially the second time watching the movie i just thought it was really good special effects i thought it was a gruesome kill i thought it was an original kill yeah tripod leg through the neck it's something you would see in friday the 13th or 
you know i just thought it was very original yep i agree question number two did you think stop motion was scary i i didn't i wouldn't say scary i would call it unnerving call it unnerving eerie yeah okay yeah that's what i would call it yeah i thought it was unnerving as well Mm -hmm. yeah i thought it was unnerving i think that's perfect yay (laughs) that's about it (laughs) i didn't think it was that scary but yeah i think it can be very unnerving actually when you think about the stop motion movie that she was making that was Mm -hmm. unnerving a little girl being made of like especially after they get the fox meat and the little girl has the reddish tinge to her skin. Yeah, dude. Yeah. She started to look more real, which was very cool. Yep, I agree. Yep, definitely had. Yeah, so gross. <laughs> well, here we go, buddy. Oof, Number three. Oof. Did you have fun with horror? No, but I really... <laughs> <laughs> no, I... well, let me rephrase that. So, I mean, it's not... If you're looking at the theory I had, it's definitely not a fun movie. You're not going to be kicks and giggles did i enjoy it though yes i thought the movie was really well made and i loved the um i mean the stop motion in it is is kind of phenomenal i mean it's so you almost can't tell it stop i mean it's just moves so vividly it's so pretty and so well done yeah um so yeah i mean i did have fun watching that side of things and i do think it's a great movie but with my theory i would say it's not a fun movie (laughs) yeah man i'm i'm with you i I thought it was fun before today, but then I'm sorry, man, not anymore. Mm-hmm. This is not a, I think it's a good movie. I think I, mm-hmm. I read some of the negative reviews. I've read the positive reviews. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I don't know if I read any positive reviews, but I know they're out there. I just, the hap, right. the couple of reviews I saw happened to be somewhat negative. Okay. okay. And I can see why they think that, but I, I like the movie. I thought it was a good movie. Nice. I am. I don't know what I'm going to think of it now. Honestly, no, I think your your theory is brilliant. Thanks, buddy. Or maybe everybody else out there is going, it was right in front of your face. Of course, that's what it was about. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't in front of my face. And so now I'm looking at it in a different light. And even though it's very dark, mm-hmm. I think maybe it might be a very even better movie than I thought. So, mm. right on. But no, it was not fun. No. <laughs> <sighs> Stop motion. Stop motion. The Ash Man comes on three nights. The Ash Man comes on three nights. On the first night, he sees her. Talking to yourself is the first sign of madness. Look, he's talking. Well, after that, I... Um, uplifting episode. Thanks to me. Sorry. I want to know what we're going to watch. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to be uh, another uplifting movie or something totally different, buddy. I, as you know, this is my favorite part. So I want to know, what are we watching next? I have no idea. Oh, okay, cool. Whether it's uplifting or not. Oh, uh, oh, something. Okay. All right. We've, you and I have never seen this. Okay. I had a couple movies in mind. But okay. everybody seems to be talking about this one. Our next movie is Late Night with the Devil. I was, I was wondering about this one, buddy. Yeah, I'm excited. It just hit Shudder. So yeah. as long as you all have Shudder, you can watch it and listen along with us. Nice. So there you go. I'm excited. I've been very curious about this movie since it was first you know, announced. And I've heard really some good things about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about this one. Honestly, back when you said that if you had known, you, you were talking about stop motion, but when mm-hmm. you said, you know, my next movie, if I had known this was coming out, right. this would have been my most anticipated. I thought you were talking about Late Night with the Devil. Uh, totally fair. That's totally fair. So there we go. Yay. Awesome, man. Good pick. I'm excited. Hey, thank you. <laughs> like i said everybody you can watch it on shutter yeah and that's it and you can rent or purchase it it's also available for rental or purchase you can do pretty much everything everything you want yeah with with its approval with its approval yeah 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 but there you go um everybody out there thank you so much for listening as always yes 
Thank you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have it in your hearts, please go on Apple Podcasts and give us a little rating and review. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. Yeah. So, and it, it would help us a lot. We got five minutes to spare. Really? That's it. Max. 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 And as always, uh, thank you to all of our friendly fellow podcasts, especially the new ones that we've befriended. Go listen to Chuddle the Pod. Go listen to Pillow Fright. Go listen to The Night Club. Go listen to The Horror House. Go listen to The Gory Gaze. Go listen to Happy Horror Time. I mean, you can go listen to Dead Meat, but everybody's already listening to them anyway. So, but go listen <laughs> yeah. to them because they're very, they're very one of our favorites. See, that's one thing I was actually thinking about this. I know we're, we're we're signing off soon, but I was thinking about this recently, and I know we've talked about it. But like one thing, I one of the many things I love about the horror community, everyone wants everyone to succeed. Everyone wants everyone to just have fun and a good time for the most part. Not ever, you know, I mean, truly, like all the, the people, people we've, we've met. Yeah. Yeah. The people we've met and befriended. It's like this is it's such a nice community that at least the people we've met and have in our community. It's really it's uplifting. It's beautiful. It's it's great to see such camaraderie with everyone. And I, I love it, man. It's so cool. By the way, Andrew, before we mm-hmm. shine off. Yeah. I just want to remind you that at the end of the episode with Chuddle the Pod that I uh-huh. was in. Yes. We were talking about they have a goo book and it's basically their book of ratings, the movies they've <laughs> rated. And they have a few movies that are five star goo rated movies <laughs> that they all three rated five stars. Wow. Yeah. Psycho Goreman was one of those movies, my friend. Oh, boy. I think I think it's about time you revisit this movie. I think you might be right. You know what? Every anytime Cindy hears about it on the podcast, we've brought it up a few times. She's like, I kind of want to see this. So it, I don't know, man. She she's interested in it, but she's never seen it. No, she hasn't seen. It. I watched this one by myself. <laughs> you know why she wants to see it? Why? Because she likes hunky boys. <laughs> It will be worth it. Something only you could have made. Great artists always put themselves into their work.